Here's the other problem that we used to introduce this series of videos, way back at the beginning of this series of videos. This is another problem that we used to introduce these videos. We talked about a person that walks for six meters at an angle of 20 degrees above this horizontal, uh, and then they switch direction and they walk for four more meters at an angle of 25 degrees with the vertical. So I hope you can read uh, the information I put on the board. This is six meters at an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal, and this is supposed to be four meters at an angle of 25 degrees with the vertical. And again, the question is, um, what is our overall displacement after this entire journey from the initial position? What's the resultant displacement? How far is the final position from the initial position? Um, what's the overall resultant displacement? How far is the final position from the initial position? Of course, this is the final position and this is the initial position. So we want to know how far is this point from this point? What's the overall resultant displacement vector? Well, please pause the video and try to solve this problem. I'm going to start by choosing some positive directions. The simplest positive directions and axes to choose here are horizontal and vertical, and these are some good positive directions. Now, the one thing we can't do is we can't just say that we're 10 meters from where we started. We can't just say 6 plus 4 is 10. I think it's pretty obvious that if you walk for 6 meters in this direction and then 4 meters in a completely different direction, there's no reason to think that you ended up 10 meters from where you started. Um, so we can't just add these together to get 10. Um, so we're, instead, we're going to have to break things down into components. Now, first of all, remember, what are we trying to figure out? Well, this is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out this overall resultant displacement vector. This is the vector that shows uh, how far we've gone from the initial point to the ultimate final point. So we want to know how long this is. And ultimately, it would be nice to know what direction it's pointing in as well. It would also be nice to know what direction this is in. Uh, clearly, it's not just pointing in a 20 degree angle, right? You can see that the overall displacement vector is not just pointing in a 20 degree angle. It's not really clear what this angle is over here. So we're going to have to use um, some of the skills that we've learned to figure that out. Well, we can't just combine the 6 and the 4 because they're not parallel to each other. So instead, we have to break these into components because the components will be parallel. So let's start by breaking the 6 meters into components. Well, we have to draw a right triangle. that uses this overall vector as the hypotenuse, and where the legs are parallel to these axes. So here we have the components of this 6 meter vector. I'll put an asterisk to show that I'm using the 6 meter number and focusing on this 20 degree angle. Uh, I think to make things uh, clearer, I'm going to take out the units here. But you should remember this is 6 meters and 4 meters. This is a right angle. Here's our hypotenuse and our adjacent side and our opposite side. Okay, so how can we break this down into components? Well, this is a skill that I hope that you feel you've made a lot of progress on. The adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. Why are we using the cosine? Because of cu. Uh, the cosine refers to the adjacent side. The hypotenuse here had a length of 6. Time to get out our calculator and find 6 times the cosine of 20. Uh, looks like that's 5.6. This is just a magnitude, a length, so I'm not going to put a sign in. But now when I'm labeling the component, I do have to put in the sign. Now the sign doesn't come from the trigonometry. The trigonometry just gives us the magnitude. We have to figure out the sign on our own. Well, we've chosen to the right as our positive direction, and to the right um, is the way that this vector is pointing, so that comes out to be positive. Uh, I hope that you've certainly gotten into the habit of always writing down your positive directions. Notice that on this problem, I didn't give you the positive directions, so you had to choose your own. I think in this case, it's simplest to choose up and to the right as your positive directions. Obviously, if you chose different positive directions, you would get different signs, but these are probably the simplest positive directions here. So the adjacent side here is positive 5.6. 
Time to find the opposite sign. So, the sign gives us the opposite side. Our hypotenuse had a length of 6. Multiply times sine 20. Time to get the calculator and do 6 times the sine of 20. That's 2.1. I'm not going to put a sign on this because trig functions just give us magnitudes. But now that I'm labeling the component, I do have to figure out the sign. Well, we've chosen up as positive, and we've decided that this vector is pointing up. By the way, how did I get these arrows? I don't remember if I mentioned this. Well, this vector here was pointing up and to the right, correct? This 6 meter vector was pointing up and to the right, so clearly it has legs. Uh, components that are pointing up into the right. So this opposite side had a length of 2.1 meters. Now I'm going to have to move on to the other vector, the 4 meter vector. So, so I, I don't get confused, I'm going to erase the work that I did on the first vector. I'm going to erase the work from the first vector so I don't get confused when I move on to the second vector. So I'm going to erase this work as well. Now we've successfully broken the 6 meter vector into its components. Positive 5.6 horizontally and positive 2.1 vertically. The next logical thing to do is to break this 4 meter vector into components. This 4 meter vector at an angle of 25 degrees with the vertical. Well, the first thing is to draw the right triangle that represents the components here. Using the overall vector as the hypotenuse, and the legs should be parallel to our axes. I hope it's clear that this 20, the 25 degrees refers to this angle down here. I kind of wrote it, um, I wrote it a little bit far from the angle because it was hard to fit it down here. But this 25 degrees refers to this angle, this corner of the triangle. Uh, okay, so the 25 degrees again refers to this angle down here at the bottom corner of the triangle. I hope that was clear. Uh, I'll label this side with an asterisk. This is the side that I've been given. Uh, that's our hypotenuse. I'll label this angle with an asterisk because I'm focusing on that angle. And then the vertical side would be adjacent to the 25 degrees and the horizontal side would be opposite. Now that we've drawn this triangle, we also have to put the arrows on the legs. Remember that we need arrows on the legs to indicate uh, what the directions of the components are. I've already drawn those in, actually. The overall vector here was pointing up and to the left. Our overall vector was pointing up and to the left. So we have a leg that's pointing up and a leg that's pointing to the left. Very important to put the arrows on the components. Uh, notice that you have to draw nice thin arrowheads so that the different arrowheads don't clash with each other. At this point, I've got three different arrowheads all pointing to the same point. So it's important to draw a nice thin arrowhead so that the diagram doesn't get too messy. Cut. We use the cosine to find the adjacent side. The hypotenuse is 4. We have to figure out 4 times the cosine of 25. 4 times the cosine of 25 turns out to be 3.6. Now, trig functions only give us magnitudes, so I'm not going to put a sign in here. 3.6. Now, I do have to figure out the sign, though, on my own. Well, we've chosen up as the positive direction, and this component was pointing up. So this is a positive 3.6. Now remember, we chose this positive direction. If we had wanted to, we could have chosen down as positive. But I think, I think it makes our life simpler here to choose up as positive. So we would use the sine to find the length of the opposite side. The hypotenuse here has a length of 4. Our angle is 25 degrees. Maybe I shouldn't use theta here because I haven't labeled that in the sketch. I should just say 25. Now, in our calculator, 4 times the sine of 25 is 1.7. Trig 
trig functions only give us magnitudes, so we're not going to indicate the sign yet. So this component has a length of 1.7, and what's its direction? Well, here's where we have to be careful. We've chosen to the right as our positive direction, but this component is pointing to the left. So that should be a negative 1.7. If the positive direction is to the right and the component is pointing to the left, it's pointing in the negative direction. Uh, of course, if you've chosen left to be positive, things would be uh, different. But since we've chosen to the right as positive, this has to be negative 1.7. Um, okay, so that's one of the parts of the problem that maybe some people might have trouble with, so make sure that you got that right. So we've decided that for this 4 meter uh, vector, the vertical side, vertical component um, was positive 3.6 and the horizontal component was negative 1.7. So now we've worked out all those components.